so welcome all the students. I hope uh, this is not too late for you. Uh, also, let me know if the timing doesn't suit you or the day doesn't suit you, then we can change to some other days. Uh, so how many students are there now? Uh, anybody want to uh, participate or anybody? So those who want to participate, I think you can raise your hand or you can put the name in chat box. So how many we got so far? Uh, till now, nobody is there, sir. So Amurta, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, do you want to participate? Yes, sir, I will try. Uh, okay. So I think, sir, we will start with Amurta. And in between, if anybody interested, I will let you know, sir. Yeah, anybody want to introduce themselves, even if they don't want to participate, uh, is uh, welcome. Uh, we want, uh, obviously, more and more people uh, to be more like a, your session than my teaching. So anybody want to introduce what are they doing? What do they expect from conceptual orthopedics or what are the... Uh, we will give you first two, three minutes uh, if anybody is there. Okay, Amrita. So uh, we discussed last time about the limb development and classification and you remember that yes sir okay so today we're going to discuss today and uh, i think probably two more sessions there are three uh, main clinical case and viva scenario which come in ms or frcs orthopedics exam and the three commonest congenital long limb deficiency, which can be in your uh, exam, will be either a femoral deficiency or a uh, fibular deficiency or radial deficiency. Okay? Yes. And we'll try to cover these. Yep. But even if you get any other rare uh, congenital uh, limb deficiency like ulna or radius, with the background knowledge of limb development and classification, you should be able to say uh, uh, something about it so that you can pass the exam. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, we will uh, start with a congenital uh, femoral deficiency. And uh, this is the name changed from proximal focal femoral deficiency. That was the name previously given. So, Amrita, do you know why do you think they would have changed this name? <laughs> Sir, actually, uh, it is mainly happening due to the uh, the defect in the pro proximal ossification center of the uh, femur. And yeah, so in that case, the appropriate name was PFFD, isn't it? Uh, Yes, sir, but uh, the ossification center is appearing, sir, before. Uh... So they changed the name to make it a bit more broader terms. And nowadays, most of the congenital uh, anomalies name have changed. Remember last time we were talking about that there are traditional classification where people used to say Amelia or Focomelia. Yes, then uh, nowadays parent, parents don't like if you say a, a milia, yeah yes sir yeah in uh, in hindi what will be the amelia called Do you know, or in bengali what will you call uh, sir difficult to tell in bengali so somebody has got them. somebody got no arm so it can be very derogatory term people don't yes, like sir. it yeah they can be bullied yes. in the exam with if you say oh you are amelic guy yeah yes sir so those things have changed so the traditional name change then anatomical name like proximal uh, focal femoral deficiency also changed because they want to include broader terms like uh, where the whole of the femur may be a bit shortened without the proximal defects yes sir yeah and they realize that although we talk about proximal focal defects actually the defect may be in the whole femur Exactly. Yeah. So the name was changed to include uh, a broader term and more uh, slightly generic term, congenital femoral deficiency. Yeah. Yes. yes. So sim similarly, when we talk about 
uh, fibular deficiency, although we still use these name proximal um, focal femoral deficiency or a, a fibular hemimalia, but the, nowadays more and more focus going towards more generic name, congenital fibular deficiency. Again, CFD is the same, uh, C, we call it CFIB uh, deficiency, yeah? Yes. And then congenital tibial deficiency, corneal radial deficiency or radial dysplasia. These are more uh, acceptable terms and also include more uh, anatomical broader in the broader sense. Yes, sir. Okay. So the purpose of this talk today is to give you an overview so that you can uh, you you get enough knowledge to do two, two things. And what are the two things? One is if it comes as a theory questions as a uh, to talk about congenital femoral deficiency, then how to write an essay or a small topic on it or a uh, or a short answer. And second is if it comes as a clinical case in your exam. And in both, you should able to uh, with confident uh, say in the exam what are the options available uh, and how do you examine this patient. So we will go through some introduction, some etiology, pathology, and some classification, both generic and specific to these terms. And then we will try to revise based on. So this is first, this first thing is your core knowledge. We will give you some core knowledge about this topic. And then this is an applied that once you know what is the core knowledge, then you applied it if a case come to you in a clinical case or in your clinical practice, if a case come, how to examine, what history to take, what are the uh, investigation to do, and what are the treatment options with it. Okay, so that will be our aim, aim to learn this topic today. So that you can attempt both sides of the questions. And it won't be in this sequence, but ultimately you will learn all these uh, aspects of this topic. So the first thing, anybody else want to participate? Uh, we want more and more people. Uh, we're not going, trying to shame you or do anything just a, a, a talking point more more of you come it's like a friendly tutorial anybody else want to introduce themselves we got about 26 so a good number yeah and in the past dr ghost you have been there are you there uh, can you hear me sir yeah 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 Hello. so is, is that dr ghost good evening, sir yeah, good evening, sir. I'm Rigan Ah, oh, Very good. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. So uh, you, you heard how we're going to tackle this topic, yeah? I was a little bit late, uh, but I think you just told about that it will come in any order, but it will help us in our exams. When you will yeah, so it will help us. in either to write a theory question if it comes to as a congenital femoral deficiency or uh, old term we use proximal focal femoral deficiency or if a case come to you. Okay? Yes, sir. Clinical case come to you. So, um, Amruta, when a, let's say, a, a child come to you uh, and the parents come with a history that this child was born with significant short leg. So what is the diagnosis will go through your mind? Uh, so child is born. So what we are already giving you a hint. It's a congenital shortening, but significant shortening. So what are the diagnosis going through your mind? Uh, sir, uh, it may be uh, a femoral deficiency. It may be fibular deficiency. Uh, or it may be tibial deficiency. There's no it may be tibial deficiency. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. nothing, nothing uh, because the significant shortening has to be from the long bone. Yeah. Yes, sir. It can't be from tarsal bone, and it 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 cannot be from a joint abnormality. It has to be some abnormality of the long bone. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, these are the three main things we should go in the in your mind, but also sometime rather than the bone being short or defective, it could be also, also that the bone is quite curved and you're giving an impression that the leg is shortened because the bone is quite bowed. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the no, normal bowing, you see, not that common in the femur, which can give you significant shortening, but the bowing in tibia uh, can give you a significant, or a leg portion of the limb can give you significant shortening. Okay, so Amrita, I was uh, we're talking about 
a some child born with and the, and the present thing complaint is that leg is very short. Yes. Okay? Yes. So we said the immediate thing come in your mind is the long bone are not formed properly or congenital deficiency of them either fully or partial and those long bones are femur, tibia and fibula. Yeah. Yes. But also sometimes they are born with not the deficiency, but bowing of the bone, and quite commonly seen bowing is in the leg component, tibial component. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, do you know what are the normal uh, bowing of the leg seen in congenital as a congenital abnormality? Sir, congenital pseudoarthritis tibia. Good. And what kind of bowing that will be? Anterior or posterior? So, mainly anterior or anterolateral. Yeah, it is anterolateral bowing. Yeah, good. And what else? Uh, so it may be, uh, sir, not congenital, but uh, infantile tibia had or Blount's disease to some extent. Yeah, so that doesn't uh, present at birth. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, so three bowing you need to know. One you already said, pseudoarthrosis. One yes. is actually absent of fibula, but classically present as a bowing of the tibia. Yes. Yeah, because you can't see the absent fibula. That is the main cause. But what you're saying is a bowing of the tibia. And that bowing is where it is an anteromedial. Anteromedial, sir. Yes. And then there is a posterior bowing or posterior medial bowing, which is normally physiological, but correct itself. And sometimes it can be quite significant to give you shortening. Yes, sir. Okay. So three bowing you need to know. Two anterior, mm. which are pathological, and one posterior, which is physiological. Yes, sir. Okay, so these are the uh, bowing and deficiency, and then you also sometimes it may not be that the bone is affected, it may be that soft tissue contracture is giving an impression and that the bone is shorter. Yeah, yes, sir. There may be a flexion contracture of the hip joint, like an orthogripotic leg, although it can be it normally is bilateral, but sometimes one side may be more than the other side, so contracture. Because of the soft congenital contracture, which is the commonness, is arthrogryposis. Yes, sir. Yeah, or that, or the tibia may be, or the uh, uh, knee may be quite flexed, and those may give you an impression that this is a short leg. Yes, okay. Sir. So yes. these are the these are the things when you uh, uh, presented with a short leg. These are the thing you need to know. And then the question is, uh, out of these three, Boeing, you will obviously come to know. In fact, one of the Boeing you can see on this leg is that yeah, the Boeing is anterior Boeing. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yeah. And this also got a telltale sign that some of the toes are missing. So if you got anterior Boeing with the missing toe, what is the diagnosis? Uh, sir, maybe uh, uh, fibular absence, sir. Excellent. So fibular deficiency. Yeah. And what about this first case? This you see the limb is shortened. So first diagnosis is shortening, congenital shortening. Now you have to uh, give what is the cause of this congenital shortening. So you see this is the patella here and this is the patella here. So most of the shortening, where is this shortening mostly? So mostly in the uh, proximal region, the hip region. Hip region. And some of this could be that the hip is abducted, flexed here. So some of this could be soft tissue, but quite the it obviously seemed that most of the shortening is here rather than here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And since the foot is okay, so and there is no bowing here, this is most likely is in, among the congenital shortening. The diagnosis here will be proximal uh, congenital femoral deficiency. Femoral deficiency. Yeah. Whereas here, this is your patella. So most of the shortening you see here, in fact, more on the lateral side, if you see, if you assume the knee joint are same level, this is shortened and this is this heel is here. So this shortening is mainly in the leg component, the component. and with associated anterior bowing and fib, uh, with the absence of the toes, the diagnosis is a fibular. Yes. Yeah. And the third will be tibial deficiency. What will you see in tibial deficiency? You will see similar shortening as this one, but yes. if anything missing, the missing will be on the medial side. Medial side. Yeah, and the foot will be also curved towards medias, just like club foot type deformity. Yes. yes. Whereas in in uh, 
fibular deficiency, it will be in both the LB equinus, but in one it will be quino varus. In, in fibular deficiency, it will be quino valgus because there is no support on the lateral side. Yes, sir. Okay, so you got deficiency of congenital deficiency of femur, congenital deficiency of uh, fibula, congenital deficiency of tibia. You can diagnose that, yes? Yes, sir. The fourth thing you need to know, and which is very uh, important to know, is that congenital deficiency of femur could also be quite often associated with congenital deficiency of fibula. So let's say CDF plus CDF. And do okay. you know how common is this? Uh, no, sir, exact percentage, I don't know. Oh, roughly, what is your uh, guesswork? 